Okay, video number three, count them three in our triad video series. What we're going to talk about in this one, and what we're going to work through, is we're going to take a written triad, and we're going to go through the process. Actually, we're going to take four written triads. We're going to take written triads, and we're going to go through the process of figuring out what the heck kind of triads these are. So, let's do this. So the first example here is in treble clef. We have an A flat, a C, and an E flat. So without looking really at anything beyond that, we know since the root or the first degree of this triad is A flat, this is going to be some sort of A flat triad. It might be A flat major, it might be A flat minor, it might be A flat diminished, it might be A flat augmented. <clears throat> so we have that going for us. That's a good first step. So the first job after that is we know we need to figure out what is the interval between the first degree and the third of the triad. So we have A flat to C. And if we look at that, A, B, C, some sort of third. It's always going to be some sort of third. That's why the second or the middle note in a triad is called the third. So if we count the half steps, it's going to be four half steps, which means this is a major third. So now we have two pieces of information. We know that the root is A flat, and we have a major third. So this, by default, if you think about the triad grid, is has to be either a major triad or an augmented triad. So anyway, that's a fun way to be a music detective. Sorry, that's some nerdiness. So the next thing we need to figure out is the distance from the first degree to the fifth. So A flat to E flat. Now, just to double check, A, B, C, D, E, we know that this is some sort of five. has to be because the two outer notes in a triad are always a fifth apart when it's in root position. If we count on the keyboard, half steps between A flat and E flat, we're going to end up with seven half steps which means this is a perfect fifth. And so we have all the information we need now. We know the root is A flat. We have a major third and a perfect fifth. And if I come over here and I grab my triad grid, we have a triad with a major third and a perfect fifth, which means it's a major triad. So how do we write major triads? Just a capital letter. BAM! So if we're going to name this, this would be A-flat. That's it, because it's A-flat major triad. Let's get that out of here. Let's look at the next one. So we're in bass clef. We have C, E-flat, and G. So we know this is going to be some sort of C triad. So we need to know the interval between C and E-flat and the interval between C and G. So C and E flat, C, D, E, it's going to be some sort of third. If we count it out on the piano, it's going to be three half steps, which means it's a minor third. Then C to G, C, D, E, F, G, some sort of fifth. If we count it out, it's going to be seven half steps, which makes it a perfect fifth. So if we go to our triad grid, we have a minor tri or uh, we have a minor third and a perfect fifth. Minor third, perfect fifth, which means this is a minor triad. So we're going to use a lowercase letter. The root of this triad is C, so it's going to be lowercase C. Now C is a little bit weird because obviously lowercase and uppercase look the same, so I don't worry about that too much. Um, as long as it kind of looks like a smallish C, our lives are going to go on. Nice. So, C minor. Let's look at the next example. Here we have E, G, and B flat. So it's going to be some sort of E triad. So E to G, E, F, G, some sort of third. If we count the half steps, it's going to be three half steps, which makes it a minor third. E to B flat. E, F, G, A, B, some sort of fifth. If 
we count the half steps, this is going to be our first deviance from seven half steps. It's actually going to be six half steps, which is going to make it a diminished fifth. So if we go to our triad sheet, you only kind of triad with a diminished fifth is a diminished triad. So it's got a minor third, yes. It's got a diminished triad, yes. So it's a diminished triad. Lowercase letter with a little circle or a diminished sign is how we notate this. So it's an E diminished, so a lowercase e with a little circle. The last example, bass clef, D, F sharp, and A sharp. So D to F sharp and D to A sharp, the two intervals we need to figure out. D to F sharp, D, E, F, some sort of third. It does have four half steps, so it's a major third. We count that on the piano. D to A sharp, D, E, F, G, A, some sort of fifth. Clearly, since I've done a major, a minor, and a diminished triad, if we count this out, oh my gosh, I can't believe it, it's going to have eight half steps, which it does on the piano, which means this is an augmented fifth. So if we go to our triad sheet, I'm just going to even only show you the one it is. There it is. So we have a major third, we have an augmented fifth. So this is, in fact, an augmented triad, and we're going to notate that by using a capital letter with a plus sign. So the tonic here is D, so this is going to be capital D with a plus. And so that is how we take a written triad and we break it down to two intervals and then we use the triad sheet to figure out what I guess the chord symbol would be for each of these. The next video we're going to do another version of this. Bye-bye.